Okay guys, we're gonna start on the middle class now. I'm gonna kinda try to break it down the best way I can. Help you understand what's going on here. We have all these machines either have rear wheel drive, some of them have all wheel drive. They're all rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. They all have personal pace. That is the key, guys. Personal pace is the jam. If you plan on mowing your own lawn, get some of the personal pace. Trust me. If you're going to plan on mowing your own lawn, expect to start paying money around $400. You could get cheaper mowers. They're just not as good. They don't hold up. So, I, get, I swear I'm going to see comments. This guy only thinks you can mow your grass with a $400 mower. No, I'm sure you can mow your grass with less than a $400 mower. I showed you some. But, if you want to mow your grass and enjoy mowing your grass, around $400 is where you're going to really start seeing the quality go up a lot. There are cheaper options and there are more expensive options, but I think these are kind of like the middle of the road options. But there's a few features that all of these share that I haven't talked about yet that I kind of wanted just to mention so you know and you are aware of what you're getting. These all have a stamped steel deck. Basically a big sheet of metal, get really hot, have a big machine, hydraulic press, blam! You make your deck shell. That's pretty much what's going on with all of these. They seem to last a very long time. I had mine, like I said, eight years. The paint holds up well. As long as you keep them dry, they're not gonna rust. They're not gonna fall apart very quickly, anything like that. They're gonna last you a long time. But because they all offer this washout feature, people have a tendency to think they need to wash their mower all the time. Every time they mow, they need to hose it off. But really, wet grass holds moisture a long time. It's basically like just throwing a big wet towel on your mower and let it sit there for a week until you're ready to mow again next week. If you're gonna rush your mower out and cause it any kind of issues like that, it's gonna be because you washed it. Just don't mow when it's wet, don't mow when it's raining. Grass won't really stick. Blow it off with your blower. That's the best way to maintain the longest possible life. You do have washout ports. If you do have to mow in the wet, that's how what you do. All these carry the washout ports. I don't necessarily recommend it. If you do use it, drop your deck all the way to the floor. It's the lowest setting, hook up your hose, Run it wide open for 10 minutes and uh, it'll be bang up, it'll be clean. And then at that point, dry it off and she should be fine. The other thing all these more share is they have eight inch front wheels and they have rubber tread on them. They used to have plastic tread on them and Toro's recently upgraded them all so they have rubber tread on them. So it has good traction, better than before, uh, but the rubber is a little bit thinner than the next class up and the rigidity is a little bit thinner than the next class up. But that's one thing that they all have now. And they also all have metal gears inside the rear wheels. And that is what your transmission engages onto and that is what powers it. And that's one thing that makes these rear wheel drive mowers more robust than the front wheel drive mowers. If it has a metal gear on a metal gear, that is a beautiful thing and lasts longer. But sand kills. Sand kills plastic gears and sand kills metal gears. If you have a very sandy lawn, you're gonna destroy whatever mower you buy. So if you plan on having your mower a long time and you wanna have a nice lawn and it's just sand everywhere, either sod it, add topsoil, add seed, you're gonna to need to invest in that lawn to make it nicer to help fill in those things or else you're just gonna to continue to have wear issues. Some people I see bring their mower into us every couple years, the whole machine's just clap, wore out, all the gears, terrible, grinding, they're slipping, it's just because they have a sandy yard and that person's gonna spend a lot of money over the years replacing lawnmowers and it's just simply because they have a sandy yard. So that's something to think about. Also something shared amongst all these uh, self or personal pace, they all have a 22 inch blade, they all have the same blade number uh, and they all cut grass the same quality. They all cut grass about the same way. There's no different feature in how they cut grass or how well they cut grass. <clears throat> so basically, the reason you want rear wheel drive, the reason this middle class is so effective in Florida is because when you are pushing a mower, this is how the self-propel system works. This handle is your brake, it stops your engine, then actually break your wheels or anything, it literally squeezes a band around your flywheel and shuts your engine off if you let go of it. By holding it back, it allows your engine to spin. But your self-propel is powered by this lever here. 
And if you've never used one of these, you should go to a local dealer and just try one. It is very fun to use, very easy. It makes cutting your grass almost like vacuuming your lawn. It's something you can use very easily. And basically, as you walk, you don't have to do anything consciously. You just walk and naturally the weight of your arms and the pressure applied by walking is going to engage that transmission and it's going to just basically walk at your personal pace. So as you walk, it's going to engage the transmission exactly the right amount and just kind of walk right in front of you. And it's just a very pleasant process and very pleasant to use. Basically as you just walk, it just walks right in front of you and when you're ready to turn, you just spin it around and you turn it. And when you're ready to back up, you just pull back. And when you pull back, it disengages your transmission and this mower will just free roll backwards. Hondas roll backwards terribly. Toros roll backwards beautifully. It's just a simple thing how they set up their transmission. I don't know why. And I'm not saying Toros with Hondas roll back terribly. This Honda push mowers roll back really poorly. I don't know why. They have a different transmission. Toros roll backwards really nice. But I always say, it's not about going backwards, it's about going forward, baby. If you're going backwards, you ain't mowing. It's all about going forward. But anyway, I think Tor does a great job. I like his personal pace. If you plan on mowing your own grass, this is the this is the genre and above is where you should be, okay? I don't know if I mentioned, but all these mowers have uh, basically three ways to mulch or cut. You can put a side discharge chute here. It's very simple to do. They come with it. You have a bagger so you can bag, you can put your side discharge on, or you can take all that stuff off and just mulch. Also, I don't know if I mentioned before, but this is how you switch from mulching to bagging. It's a very easy system. The other ones on the cheaper class don't have that feature. Basically this rear flap, when it closes, that's what closes and blocks off your hole, or your, uh, your rear discharge chute. So it's not quite as good, you'll find that this area will get packed on the cheaper mowers. On this, you have a nice flap that closes and it keeps this compartment area cleaner, longer. But if you need to cut your grass and it's been raining or it's too tall, the side eject is very, very nice and it's not a feature you find on all push mowers. Hondas don't have it uh, and the cheapest Toro doesn't have it either. But all this lineup has it. And so that's a very nice feature, side discharge. All these machines, I don't know if I mentioned before, have a two year warranty. That's transmissions, everything that makes them roll, the wheels, the hinges, all the little components, the wheels, the handles, and then three years engine. So let's talk specifics. To make it simple, there's three engine options. There is the Briggs and Stratton, which, which is the most affordable, the least expensive engine option. And that is on a large portion of this class. You'll see those mostly sold at Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Tractor Supply, that sort of thing. These are pretty much all specifically designed for Home Depot in mind. Uh, and it was kind of specifically because the Briggs and Stratton name is a very popular and understood uh, push mower brand and name for a long time. So they wanted something very recognizable and tangible for the customers. They didn't want to have to have it explained to them. Uh, people just saw Briggs and Stratton. I know my grandfather had a Briggs and Stratton. They're a good engine. And so they put Bridges Stratton on a huge amount of push mower options, and that's what you kind of see here. There's also some Honda variations, and then there is my personal favorite, the Toro engine variations. The Briggs and Stratton ones have the most options, uh, and I think it's just to cater to the widest variety of people. You know, Home Depot and Lowe's sell different brands like Troy Built and Husqvarna, and so Toro has to make models that compete specifically with each one of those models and so they've kind of tailor-made these Toros all specifically to compete individually and to win in each class of push mower. So they have a basic rear wheel drive, they have a rear wheel drive with a clutch so you can turn the blades on and off, they have a rear wheel drive with an electric start which is nice. The battery does not self-charge, you're going to have to charge it every two or two to three months, you're going to have to put it on charge. Basically, it comes a little charge, you plug it in, plug in a little wire, uh, you can see it in the wiring harness. It's very easy to do, and that'll allow you to push button start it. And that's nice if you have shoulder problems, elbow problems, your wife needs to know, all those kind of things. So that's something to think about. They have a rear wheel drive that will smart stow, which means you can turn the engine up like we've seen before and stow it in the corner of your garage, which not everybody has that option. I think it's an exclusive thing for Toro and Briggs, which is really nice. 
they have a Toro with power reverse. So as you're pushing backwards, it has a second transmission that is flipped opposite in the front. So when you pull backwards, it literally starts to drive towards you, which is, might kind of be scary to some of you, but Toro figured it out. It's stunned safely. It feels nice when you pull back. It kind of just rolls back nice and easy. And when you push forward, it drives forward nice and easy. And I think they did that literally because the Hondas, uh, not Honda Toro, but Hondas in general, roll backwards so terribly, and people always complain about it. They wanted to make something that rolled backwards just amazingly. So they made literally a powered reverse to just uh, compete against the people who have Hondas. They're like, oh, you don't like the way Hondas roll backwards? Here's the powered reverse. And I really appreciate that. And they kind of used the, the Briggs and Stratton lineup to be their experimental line, the one they're trying to use as like the basic uh, competitor to everyone, right? It has a powerful engine. It's a 7.25 horsepower. It's 163 cc's. It's a pretty basic engine, but it's a good engine. It actually works really well, but it does sound a little different than the old flathead Briggs you're used to, the older, bigger engines, uh, but it works, works decent. And so this lineup is mostly sold at Home Depot, and that engine option is a slightly cheaper one. They also have all-wheel drive. That's to compete against the Husqvarna all-wheel drive. I think Toro does it better than Husqvarna. It's definitely less convoluted. You flip it on its side, you look at the, how the transmissions are set up on the Husqvarna, there's all kinds of weird pulleys in there that get jam-packed with dirt, and get all kinds of jacked up. Uh, these ones, it's basically like a front-wheel drive mower plus a rear-wheel drive mower. It's very simplified. I think Toro's done a beautiful job, and I think they've literally won in every single class of push mower with this lineup. If you're looking for a push mower and you want one of those features, you do the best by going with the Toro option versus the other variants. But guys, here's the deal. As these are made specifically for the big box stores, and I don't think they're the best option. Toro has, I think, the even better option, has less features. So if you're really specifically looking for a particular feature, like the all-wheel drive or the powered reverse, then you might have to go with the Briggs & Stratton option because they don't offer it on all the engine options. But if you wanted to know what is the most reliable engine that I see the least here for repair, that I recommend the most for uh, people to buy, I do not recommend anything in that front line we talked about. I only recommend one mower, and because I know it's gonna make people happy, I'm not gonna shock them with the price, and it's gonna last them a very long time, it's gonna treat them very, very well. And that is my personal favorite mower. It is this one, a Toro rear-wheel drive with personal pace, so it's very simple, no crazy features, just rear-wheel drive with personal pace with Toro's own engine. This engine came out nine years ago, but Toro, this engine has been the best engine on any push mower I see ever. I mean, literally. Guys, I, I'm not only making YouTube videos all the time. Most of my day, I sit on a service counter checking in lawn mowers to be repaired and assigning them to my mechanics. And the ones that are in the shop most for repair are the Kohlers. Gosh, hate the Kohlers. And then the Hondas are the next most common. And then the Briggs and last the Toro. I rarely see this mower in for repair. The engine is just rock solid. It is such a good engine. It's just built better. I don't know why. I don't know what they did different, but the jets work better, it gets clogged less, it just works better. I think all these other features are fine. I don't think they're gimmicks. I think they have a specific niche for people who have specific needs. But for me, if you have a normal lawn, it's less than you know a third of an acre, quarter of an acre, that's your best bet. It's basically 399, has Toro's engine on it, rear wheel drive, self-propel, works good. That, engine also comes on or comes with a clutch option that you can turn your blades on and off and it also comes with an electric start option so the only other mower in this lineup is the honda you see it all the way down here this is the plain jane honda rear wheel drive self propel um, they also have an electric start option and i think they have a clutch start option also i didn't have those in the building uh, i just didn't order them when i ordered my big batch just because I honestly don't sell them that much and I don't like recommending them that much. Uh, not because they're terrible, they actually work okay. I just don't think they're better than the Toro and it's more money, so why, why bother? Um, but that pretty much concludes the entire mid-class lineup. I want to get all these out of the way and I want to talk about the next tier of lawnmowers. 
The next tier Toro offers is called the Super Recycler. They have a thicker deck. They have actually a smaller deck. It's a 21 inch instead of 22 inch. Let me get all these out of the way and we'll talk about them. And once we're done with that, I'm gonna bring out my top five favorite mowers and we're gonna compare those top five and why I picked each five of those. Stay tuned, let us move these out of the way. Oh, oh, oh.